Spawning here on the 6 o'clock position, we've got Fnatic MSI's TT1 as the blue Protoss. Spawning at the 5 o'clock, we've got Liquid Chef as the purple Zerg. And this is on Terminus. Yes, Terminus, the... I, I don't even want to call it... I mean, it is a giant map, so I, I I mean, I hesitate to call it the largest map, but it seems it's the lar it's it's forced to be the largest map. The reason I say that is because um, if you take a look, this little choke point right here actually... Uh, uh, it, it cuts off three bases, so it's really easy for people to just go ahead, wall this off, or put a couple of sentries up here, or play defensively right here, and then go up to three bases really quick. So it's not even that this map is that giant, it's just so easy to take three bases that it, it forces long macro games in a lot of circumstances. Yeah, and it's very similar to Tall Dream Ultra in that way, that you have pretty much three bases if you can control one choke point. And uh, look, we've got Chef and, and TT1 having a little banter about that last game. Sheth saying he's done this build too many times. TT1 saying countering is not a build, which I think is funny because Sheth going for a fast third pretty much is a counter to a forge fast expand. Yeah, but I mean, um, I, I see where TT1's coming as well. Um, but let's actually take a look. Chef, I am a little bit surprised. Maybe it's just the reputation of TT1 preceding him. TT1, a player who is not afraid to drop down cannons if the situation calls for it. Not afraid to go into a 4 gate if the situation calls for it. And it looks like Chef is actually going to drop down a 14 pool. So not opting for that very fast expand, which is so popular on Terminus. Uh, he is going to play... A little bit more uh, defensively as far as his economy is concerned by getting up a couple of units to protect an expansion, whereas TT1 opting for that Forge Fast Expand. Now, unfortunately, he's not going to be able to drop down a significant number of cannons because um, Sheth is going to have a couple of links out and should be able to prevent any sort of um, blockage to his natural. Yeah, so far both players' builds look very similar to Game Ooh. 1. Oh, nice! Dropping the hatch down with the probe, trying to block it. Uh, and it looks like a Forge Fast Expand from TT1 again here. Yeah, and um, looks like he saved up the 400 minerals, so that'll be coming down here in just a second. So, you're a Protoss player, and I assume you've played on this map a, a few times at least. You know your Zerg opponent is going after a relatively late hatch. Do you decide to play a super, super defensive game and go right up to those three bases then? Or do you like to put on a little bit of pressure in this circumstance? I personally, and yes. I'm, I'm only a Masters player, I'm nowhere near the skill level of these two guys. Uh, I prefer to go into Stargate after taking mm -hmm. my fast expansion, maybe one or two Stargates, and do some Phoenix and Void Ray harassment to the Zerg. Keep him on two bases as, if possible. If he does try to throw up a third, you could try to pick up that drone and kill it with phoenixes and mm -hmm. deny him from even planting it down. It's actually extremely annoying for a Zerg. And you could pick off all his overlords around the map, completely take over map vision, and then you could take your third behind that pressure. So I'm a, really, I'm a big fan of that play. We'll have to see what TT1 decides to do here. Yeah, and this is pretty easy to proxy tech as well. Oh, we'll talk about that in a second, as we do have a very, very fast third coming out of Chef once again, actually dropping that down. And on this map, that is actually just as fine as dropping down a macro hatch, because it is so easy to defend that you just have that one choke point that we were talking about before, here guarded nicely by Mr. Automaton 2000. Um, that, yeah, I mean, that taking the third base, there's really no, I mean, there's, there's, no harm in taking that over taking a macro hatch or something like that. He'll be able to utilize the production in exactly the same way. What I was going to talk about before, though, is that TT1 has an option to even proxy a little bit of tech up here if he wants to drop some starports, make a very, very short uh, cross distance across that very small chasm. Looks like uh, Sheth is going to go after these destructible debris, though. And it's going to take a while for those to go down. But if he's able to do so, that opens up a huge avenue of attack and actually could outright kill TT1. Um, because he would be able to flood links in through the right-hand side, and that would catch TT1 significantly off guard. Yeah, I've got a little deja vu here, Cats. This looks like the exact same game we just saw in Zelmaga Caverns, with almost identical builds going down. We'll have to see if TT1 decides to go for a, a massive seven-gate push from this. But yeah, the difference with the third base on this map versus a map like Tall Dream is there are those rocks that take a while to work down, and then you can bust in through the side and attack those. So it's two chokes, actually, that you have mm -hmm. to control to be comfortably on three bases on Terminus. And let's take a look here. Sheth is putting up his third queen, of course. 
but just been droning this entire time. Um, it looks like gases are coming up very late, and that tells me that he doesn't want to go for any sort of a speed build. This is going to be some sort of a tech unit in a second. I would expect uh, two more gases coming down here over at the natural as well, and then maybe a, a, a straight switch into layer plus roach upgrade, something like that. Um, yeah, we could see something like that. He's droning very, very hard right now, and he just dropped oh, wow. a roach warrant, and yep. TT1 is actually going for another extra five gateways to add on to his additional gateway, so it looks like oh, there's a sixth. So it looks like this is exactly the same game we just saw. Let's see if Chef has evolved and will find a way to hold it. Oh, he's actually going one extra gate just for good measure here. So this can be an eight gate, two gate, plus one timing push here from TT1 into Chef. Let's take a look at Chef's oh, Chef nine vision. Gate. Nine gates. That's nine gates. Wow. Yeah. This is actually, uh, we're in all in territory now, Kevin. Oh, no, no, certainly. But especially with the plus one upgrade that's coming down. Uh, looks like Chef is aware that there is a building being constructed right here, but he's not aware of all the gateways being constructed in the back at the moment. But. Uh, Chef does have his layer tech and his roach tech down a little bit earlier this time, and because of the smaller choke point, if TT1 des does decides not to go with a very sentry heavy force and decides to go with the very zealot stalker heavy force like he did last time, which I think he's showing because he's still only on one gas at the moment, um, then Chef very much has the opportunity, especially with this pretty good creep spread, to just cut the force in half right here. Yeah, and uh, you can see here that uh, TT1 is actually moving up in the map with a probe to, to put a put a proxy pylon in position here he's already putting the pressure on chef chef is throwing down spore crawlers i'm not sure what those are for uh, i'm worried about the stargate play you were talking about before yeah, i'm actually really surprised that he didn't sack an overlord to scout like he did in the previous game uh, I'm, if we check his vision real quick i'm pretty sure he actually doesn't know about this these gateways yet he doesn't he might assume something similar is in the works but those spore crawlers are actually very curious uh, cats. I'm not sure what those are for. Maybe he's worried about the DT rush. It's possible. And looks like he's going to go to work on the struggle to debris, but of course that is revealed with the creep spread that Chef has down. Already swings a few links around, gets himself a nice, uh, well, almost. I was about to say, I uh, was going to say pylon kill. That didn't happen. Then was going to say zealot kill. That didn't happen. And <laughs> unfortunately he loses all of his zerglings there. So, he is sending yes. a couple here into the expansion. Oh, no, he's just trying to cut off reinforcements, which is a good move, but he's actually not going to be successful here with only five lanes. Yeah, but he is doing a little bit of free damage while these uh, destructible debris go down. The roaches were already doing a little bit of damage of their own. Pretty good reinforcement coming out of Chef, though. He is building up quite the force. He's got 16 roaches and 14 lanes, but TT1 is pushing in, of course, with that nine gate pressure. He's going to be able to warp in an immense amount of units, but if this doesn't work for him, this is going to be pretty painful. Here we go. Chef trying to do as much damage as he can, pulling back and kiting with these roaches. Actually doing a pretty successful job of that. The the power of these stalkers really hasn't been realized quite yet. Unfortunately, Chef a clicks his own extractor there for a second. I'm sure that wasn't intended. <laughs> and he does defeat the first force of zealots over on the right-hand side. There's just too many zealots here, though, Cat's Pajamas. I really don't think Chef is going to be able to hold this attack. There's just too much raw force from the Protoss. This is a very all-in build from TT1, so it's actually really, really, really hard to stop. Yeah. Scout scouted early, which Chef did not. I've got to say, though, the Zealot cover is gone, and Chef is still wow. reinforcing, and he's up by 50 supply. Uh, taking a look, he's still up by 12 workers as well, and it looks like he's going to drive off the last couple of units, and he's going to push the Stalkers back. TG1 trying to reinforce as quick as possible. I'm going to take a poke down here real quick and actually look at the gates. Uh, yeah, he is. he was not actually utilizing all of his gates at that time, so his, his mineral saturation was just not good enough. I'm going to take a look at workers killed. Looks like Chef was able to wow. slip in a few workers, but it doesn't matter. TT1 GG's. Chef making me eat my words. No uh, worries. Absolute ridiculous hold there from Chef. I'm not even really sure how he did that. Uh, very nice control with his roaches. Micro against the zealots. Isolating the stalkers to only fire at a couple of his roaches. And uh, one of those gateways wasn't even converted into a gateway from TT1. Right. But that was just a really, really good hold from Chef. I'm very impressed by that. I actually called that wrong. Uh, no, no, that's fine. Uh, every once in a while, you'll see something like that that just completely blows your mind. Chef uh, pulling his drones at exactly the right time, making sure he had minimal losses on them because the zealots were already engaged, forcing the zealots back through this tiny little choke point. The roaches were able to knock them out very quickly while he was keeping the stalkers engaged in the stalkers. Look at that. I mean, they were shooting overlords, but they didn't kill any of them. I know that sounds relatively minor, but this is 150 damage that was applied to this overlord that could have taken out a roach. And, you know, when you're talking about those little losses they add up over and over again and tt1 just ended up failing there so congratulations to chef he does take that game evens up the set one game to one we're gonna head into game number three here in just a second